I love video game glitches, and from the success of my top 10 game breaking glitch video, so do a lot of other people. Glitches are usually fun little programming quirks, cracks in gameplay that give gamers a glimpse behind the curtain to how their favorite games function. However, even the most harmless glitches tend to be annoying from a game designer's perspective because it usually reflects poorly on the quality of work and disrupts the flow and immersion value the game is trying to achieve. But gamers leaning on the hardcore side of the hobby tend to find glitches charming, like the Japanese philosophy of Wabi Sabi. It's the imperfections that can make a player more attracted to the game. I like to think of them as unofficial easter eggs. However, there's a good reason why game designers dread the thought of glitches in their game. And if you've seen my first video, you should all know where this is going. In my opinion, the best type of glitches are when the player can become so skilled in a game that they gain the ability to manipulate the game to their will using obscure patterns in the game's mechanics that the developers would have never dreamed of the player ever finding. However, when there is a glitch that is a glaring, ugly obstacle to the player, that's when we've really got a problem. These are 10 more of some of the worst game-breaking glitches of all time. Number 10, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. About three-fourths of the way through Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, CJ must save the drunk and suicidal rapper Mad Dog by driving a truck with boxes underneath him before he jumps off a roof. It's a unique mission to the game and serves as little more than a quick and easy way to advance the storyline. But for some players, it wouldn't be so easy. As soon as the cutscene ends, Mad Dog immediately kills himself, leaving the player completely confused as to what the hell they were supposed to do to prevent it. Is there a criteria that hasn't yet been met? Is this how the game is supposed to play out? What could be the problem? Well, many players would eventually come to the conclusion that this mission has an anti-cheat flag put in by Rockstar to punish anyone who used too many cheats. They're on the right track, but this falls more into the developer oversight category. It doesn't really matter how many cheats you use, if you use the pets attack each other cheat even once, your game has the potential of forever being stuck at the Mad Dog mission. The common scenario is that many users played around with cheats early on in the game during free roam and then disabled them for the story. The problem is that the glitch would still occur even after the deactivation. Using cheats completely shifts the properties of the game, but even though you deactivated them, the game doesn't really check to make sure everything is back in its right place. When you enable the cheat, the Civ Mel class is overwritten to look a little something like this, but when you disable the cheat, it doesn't reinstate the rules, it just removes what it added. Now, PEDs continue to do their thing because their existence is just backdrop anyway, but because Mad Dog has a specially scripted sequence that he must go through, his character class being modified at this point makes the entire thing shit the bed. If you were unfortunate enough to save during any point after using the cheat, your game would forever be stuck at the Mad Dog mission. So this one is up in the air. Should Rockstar have been more responsible in what powers they gave the player, knowing that it could completely cripple their gaming experience? Or should players have known better than to save while using cheats? Personally, while I think Rockstar should have made sure that deactivating cheats would have completely restored the NPC properties as opposed to reset them to a static value, that's definitely an oversight. I think the responsibility falls on the player for saving with cheats. These days, it's often hard to find games that give the player cheats, and I think it's for reasons just like this. Game designers know that giving the player tools to potentially break their games is a bad thing, and because of that, cheat codes are becoming increasingly rare in modern gaming. So remember, don't ever save while using cheat. Number 9, Grand Theft Auto 3. Well, I just cannot mention Grand Theft Auto game-breaking glitches without mentioning the infamous Purple Nines glitch in Grand Theft Auto 3. The northeast end of Shoreside Vale is home of two gangs, the Red Jacks and the Purple Nines. After a set of missions given to you by D-Ice where you target the Purple Nines, you unlock one final mission where you and D-Ice's brother battle the entire gang with baseball bats. As soon as you pass the mission, the standard mission pass data is executed, but included in that line of code is Override Gang Model. Once this is ran, the Purple Nines cease to exist. Now, for some bizarre reason, that bit of data carries over to every new save file, essentially making the original save file a virus. For every save file you make, the Purple Nines will still be in the override effect and never spawn on the map. So if you try to play the first mission D-Ice gives you where you must kill 20 Purple Nines to pass, you're instead going to see nothing but Red Jacks, making the entire mission impossible to complete. 
Interestingly enough, this glitch apparently has never been fixed, so even in the Android edition, this glitch can occur. Number 8, Charlie's Angels. Where do I even start with this game? Charlie's Angels is an awful movie-based beat-em-up game developed for the Nintendo GameCube. This game plays about as well as it looks. Apparently, the game was so bad that the North American PS2 port was cancelled despite it already existing in a PAL format. For all the weird fuckery that exists in this game, the strangest by far is a glitch that will occur upon starting the game. If you started the game without a memory card, the game would essentially boot into a demo mode without notifying the player, forever looping the second part of Mission 1. As soon as the mission ends in a seamless transition, you'd be right back at the start. You'd go through again and again and... Yeah, this is basically hell. Many players who encountered this glitch often gave up without ever experiencing the main game where there exist many more fighting combos and features. It's still a terrible, awful, no good, very bad game, so this glitch is probably doing you a favor by stopping you from playing it. Number 7, Action 52. How can I not include Action 52 on this list? The entire cartridge is practically a game-breaking glitch. Action 52 was developed by four just out of high school college kids who had a mere three months to design, program, and compile the final game. Most of them had never even worked on a game before. They were hired by a businessman who didn't have a clue about the market he was getting into. It was a recipe for disaster, and a disaster is what we got. According to one of the designers, he came into the office one day and everyone more or less said, Welp, it's been three months, we're done! And that was the end of development. No one bothered to test the final game, it was compiled and that was it. The result is a 52 game multicart priced at $200, but almost every game is a poorly programmed mess and many of the games crash upon selecting them from the menu. But that's not why I included Action 52 on this list. Action 52 is essentially only two games with 50 filler games. Those two games are, of course, The Cheetah Men, which was destined to be launched into a full-blown franchise that went nowhere. Hey, what about you guys? Oh yeah, we're in there too. The Cheetah Men. Yes, but that's another story. If you want the ultimate game challenge, you have to get Action 52. And Ooze. Ooze is important because this was one of the major marketing ploys for this game to sell. The advertisements claim that anyone who could beat Ooze would be entered to win $104,000. However, anyone brave enough to attempt this feat would quickly have their journey end on Stage 2 when the game freezes while attempting to transition to Stage 3. And the instruction manual isn't very helpful in what to do about this. Ooze is actually a fully playable game if you're running an emulator, but due to conflicts with the NES hardware, it completely crashes on a real console. If you manage to beat the 5th level, you will get a contest entry code which you're instructed to send to an address in the Bahamas. Sadly, nothing ever came from the contest because it was impossible for anyone to participate because of this glitch. So I'm probably the first person to have ever done this, but I did submit in an entry to the contest, so by default, I humbly accept the title as Action Game Master. I hereby demand everyone involved in the development of Action 52 send me money. Number 6, Luigi's Mansion. Luigi's Mansion debuted as the launch title for the Nintendo GameCube, and for the first time, Mario's younger brother was cast to be the leading star. Well, technically this would be his second, but we don't talk about that other game anymore. The premise of the game has Luigi searching a haunted mansion for his older brother Mario. To do so, he must fight hordes of ghosts and collect keys to progress through the locked doors in the mansion. There are about 25 keys in the game you must collect in order to unlock the entire mansion to save Mario. Our game-breaking glitch occurs on the very last portrait ghost, Vincent Van Gogh. First, the player must fight a wave of every ghost variation before taking on the main ghost himself. After an intense battle, he's defeated. At this precise moment, two things can happen. One, the player runs and grabs the key right away and the game continues as normal. Or two, there's a ghost hiding right next to us. Let's go ahead and take care of him first. Of course, this being one of the most annoying ghosts in the game, he's going to immediately run through the wall, enticing you to chase him. And so you do so, and of course, he's going to run right back. However, when you re-enter the room, you might notice that something's missing. Ah, uh, no time to think about that, we have a fight on our hands. So after you defeat the Boo, you're prompted to save as you always are after a Boo fight, and... Wait a minute. WHERE'S THE FUCKING KEY?! 
By leaving the room after the key spawns, you despawn the key without ever collecting it, so you're screwed. You have to reset the game. Game over. It's not over. Everybody betrayed me. I fed up with this world. Number 5. Metroid Other M Metroid Other M is quite a controversial game among fans of the Metroid franchise. Part of the controversy is because the main protagonist, Samus, underwent some major character development in the title that left many fans feeling even more alienated from the once mysterious galactic bounty hunter. The word he so obviously chose, outsider, pierced my heart. It's like, wow, Samus is so serious and deep. The saving grace for Other M is that it has some rather fast paced and satisfying gameplay, but when you encounter a game breaking glitch, the entire experience is forever tainted. In Sector 3, you have to fight the Rhodesian for the third time to unlock the basement of the desert refinery. After the fight, if you happen to be low in health and decided, nope, not going to risk dying and redoing that boss fight, and walked all the way back to the last save point, the door that you would need to go through to continue the rest of the game would instead be permanently shut. Thankfully though, Nintendo made sure to warn everyone about this glitch in every way they could, and even offered a service where players could send in their glitch saves to be fixed for free. I'm not exactly sure if the service is still being offered, but if it isn't, then your only option at this point is to restart the game with a new save. Still, it begs the question, why do so many games have important doors that lock upon saving? Number 4 Tomb Raider Legend The nature of a Tomb Raider game is to explore, get a feel for your surroundings, and then solve a puzzle based on those surroundings to advance in the level. No greater example of this can be found than the England level of Tomb Raider Legend. The level features many things you can interact and play with, even for the hell of it. Now further on in the stage, you'll enter a room and the first thing you see are four big flashing levers. You're also in front of a locked tomb, so naturally at some point you're probably going to see what those big levers do. Except interacting with these levers at this point is a very dangerous thing to do, because if you happen to tap the button to pull the lever as opposed to just press it once, the entire contraption basically breaks as then the lever won't drop the cage anymore. This can happen to every lever in the room as I demonstrate here, but even if you break just one, you've completely screwed yourself. You see, after this room, you continue on through the level as normal, during which you'll encounter two checkpoints. Once these checkpoints are hit, the broken lever data carries over with it. As you'll find out the hard way, these levers were meant for a boss fight at the end segment of the level. You're supposed to have them drop a cage on the head of this giant serpent right here, but since one of them doesn't work, you'll never be able to do enough damage to defeat the boss, and if you happen to save during any time after those checkpoints, you make the level, and therefore the entire game, impossible to finish. Number 3, Jack X Combat Racing. Jack X Combat Racing is a pretty damn good racing game based off the Jack and Daxter platform series. As the saying goes, if a game mascot is successful enough, a racing spinoff will soon follow. But it really is a good game, just not flawless. If you play Jack X on a slim PS2, you may encounter an issue with the autosave function. Typically, the autosave icon will appear briefly in the menu screens, but for slim PS2s and some models of the fat PS2s, there's a chance of that save icon not leaving the screen. It'll even carry over into the actual game itself. Now, as gamers, what are we constantly told in almost every game we play? Do not turn off the system while the game is saving. Except, the game is constantly saving, so eventually the game is going to have to shut off. When that happens, your saves get corrupted. You may even get a block of undeletable corrupted data on your memory card. Yikes. There were like 8 or so versions of the PS2. Some of the versions were obviously different like the slim models, but most of the changes were tweaks internally in the fat models. Given that there were so many versions of the PS2, my guess is that Naughty Dog didn't have the time to have the game thoroughly playtested on every model, thus it slipped past QA. This is basically the console equivalent of what I was trying to say about PC gaming glitches in my last video. Everyone got so angry at me for badmouthing PCs, but this is the point I was trying to make. Because there were so many models of the PS2, that means there were a lot more variables developers had to take into account for things to go wrong. Developers have a limited amount of time to get a working game finalized, and they're not going to have time to test every make, model, and add-on for a console. For PC, it's the same way, except almost no PC is built the same. It's pretty rare to see a glitch like this on a console, and that's why Jack X is so special. Number 2. Enter the Matrix 
Enter the Matrix is a game designed to tie in with The Matrix Reloaded and The Matrix Revolutions. Featuring over an hour of original live-action footage, this game was meant to fill in some of the gaps between the films. As far as movie-based games go, that makes it pretty special, but in typical movie-based game fashion, this game is a bland, watered-down version of the films. It doesn't help that there are many glitches in the game to boot. Oh yes, there is absolutely a glitch in The Matrix. I played all versions of this game and I've come to the conclusion that the GameCube version is just about flawless. The Xbox version, however, would sometimes show a damaged disc error despite being in mint condition, and would also pop up this error message from time to time. Press L1 to try to recover. Except I'm on an Xbox. Out of curiosity, I decided to look more into these error messages, and it turns out they had a really tough time making this game. Here's a few more messages I'd like to share. SPU odd stream failed. Big fuck, tell Tony. Scripter fucked up and tried to trash memory. Particle texture fucked. Whore ass. Too many portals. I got into some shady ass B. Lee save game code. Oh no. Who's calling my code shady? I pity the fool who's calling B's code shady. Pity I say! Brian Lee, I'm calling all your code shady because this is one busted ass game. Anyway, the PS2 version is by far the worst version. The frame rate is outright terrible on some levels, but the game will also constantly crash at the Control Tower 2 level, making the entire game impossible to finish. Right when the boss appears on the screen, the game just freezes, and there's nothing you can do. So basically what we have here is one game with two different game-breaking glitches on two different platforms. What a disappointment. Number 1. Age of Empires The Age of Kings Age of Empires for the Nintendo DS is a portable turn-based strategy port to its PC counterpart, featuring 5 historically based scenarios, 28 unique campaign missions, oh, and one nasty game-breaking glitch. If your player profile name was 3 characters or less, the game would sometimes freeze in battle, save data would become corrupted, and worse, the entire cartridge would be bricked. Truly a game-breaker. Apparently, the glitch was so hard-coded in the game that Majesco couldn't even fix the problem once they were aware of it. Instead, future copies of the game came with a little slip of paper warning players about the glitch. If that isn't some busted-ass programming, I don't know what is. So there you go, 10 more of some of the worst game-breaking glitches of all time. I hope you found the video informative and... Wait, whoa, n negative one? Well, okay, just to clear things up, many people were a bit annoyed that I only included old games in my list, and the reason is very simple. Games are now being patched. Day 1 patches now existing on all current-gen consoles are making game-breaking glitches less of a problem in this current age of gaming. But of course that doesn't mean game-breaking glitches are ever going to die. They're just going to get... stronger. For example, the Wii U has been known to have some rather buggy system software. An error players often got was Error 160. This made playing some games impossible, including the long-awaited Super Smash Bros. Players desperate enough to fix the error would try to reformat their system so they could wipe it clean of errors and have a fresh start. The thing about that is, by reformatting, you brick the entire console. Ouch. Oh, and what about the Xbox with its red ring of death? I had to replace a total of three consoles because of this. Or maybe it was four. I lost count. When you lose count on how many times you had to replace a $300 piece of hardware, then something is seriously fucky. Not to mention that people have gone into business and made a living off selling repair kits for this shit. People were making disgusting, gaudy modifications to their Xbox in order to give their Xbox a fighting chance against this error. Hell, people would actually wrap their Xbox in goddamn towels to purposely overheat and reset their Xbox in order to milk just a few more minutes of game time from their systems. That is some next level game breaking bullshit. Okay, well obviously this is a hardware malfunction and not a glitch, but shut up. Oh, and don't think I'm letting you off the hook, Sony. Last year when Sony released version 2.5 for the PlayStation 4, many users just automatically had their consoles bricked. When one user contacted Sony about it, they wanted him to pay $150 to have it shipped and repaired. Wow, stay classy, Sony. So I guess the moral of the story is that game-breaking glitches are never going to die. Maybe the next time you turn on a console, maybe you'll get a game-breaking glitch. <laughs> okay. So that's the end. Thanks for watching and supporting my channel. Check out the original top 10 here and click here to subscribe. Wait, oh, what the hell is that doing there? Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, hey, Diddy. Oh, yeah, sorry about butchering the title of your game amongst other things. Uh, oh. 
Oh, Diddy, no, don't do that. That's dangerous. Don't do that, Diddy. No, don't do that. Diddy, don't. Oh. Diddy. I still remember the day the glitches took over, mass hysteria was had by all. The stock markets crashed, hand jobs and other sexual favors have now replaced currency. At some point, we all try to kill ourselves. But the glitches will never let us die. In 4039, I was betrayed by my allegiance and sold as a sex slave to a traveling guild of furries. After the Znuff Wars of 7073, among the chaos and confusion of the furry holocaust, I managed to escape. As I was seeking refuge, the surviving members of the furry guild issue a manhunt for me. Before I was apprehended, I set my Z-130i space cruiser to hyper-warp to the center of the sun. That's when I blacked out. I woke up to a new world. A world of the most horrible things I have ever seen. I broke down and cried. Not at the realization that my life would never again be the same, but that my journey had really just begun. <laughs>